Uh, I think it's okay. This is uh, session D11. It's uh, the November the, 5th, the 5th. And this is uh, co a session called the Danish uh, After School, a relational school. And I'm uh, Thomas Book. So we can start. I try to share my screen. Um, does it work? Yes. Nice. We can see the whole presentation. Yeah. Now you cannot. <laughs> okay. Uh, I. I will tell you a little bit about uh, a special uh, form of uh, school we have uh, found in Denmark 150 years ago called uh, the Danish Efterskole. Uh, Efterskole, if I should translate it, it's after school, but that's a, that's a quite strange world, word, in fact. Uh, and, and it's not what we are doing. Um, uh, then I'll tell you about uh, the school that I work. It's uh, in fact also a school that I have uh, founded together with uh, my wife and, and, and uh, another guy called Jesper. Uh, uh, it's an after school we have founded. I'll tell you about that. And I'll tell you how we use uh, sports in that school to uh, develop uh, relational skills and to develop good relations uh, at the school. Uh, and then uh, at last, at least, uh, I'll tell you about uh, uh, the social construction has given me an idea to try to, to talk other, uh, in another way of our school because it's a special needs school. And uh, I can feel that the students, they don't like that we talk about the school that way. And I've got an idea to, uh, to talk about it in a more positive way. So. Uh, so I hope we can share that. I'm not finished with that idea. Maybe you can help me when, uh, when I finish this. Um, but now I try to get, uh, here it is. Uh, but first a little bit of uh, who I am. Uh, and I think when we are in this connection, it could be very nice to tell you who my relations uh, are because I, I am my, my relations. At the, at the two uh, first uh, pictures in, uh, at, in the top, uh, left and right at, my, at the pictures, that's my family. I got, uh, I got in fact, two families. I'm, uh, I'm divorced and get uh, new families. So um, that's, uh, uh, that's very nice. In the, in the middle, in the, in the top, uh, you can see all the employers of our school. That's also a very important relations for me because we try to make a relational school. And uh, I think it doesn't work if we are not relational with, uh, with all the employers. Uh, in, in the middle, uh, down, uh, down sides, it's uh, uh, I'm, I'm having uh, uh, something with the students. Uh, it's, in fact, it's the first school day this year where all the, the students are. Um, talking with them uh, and to them, in fact. <laughs> um, but, but also the other students we have, that's also a kind of my relations because we are getting very close during uh, a year. Uh, at, at the left, at my, uh, at, at the left in the bottom, uh, it's, uh, it's two beach volleyball uh, teams from Denmark uh, because that's also a part of my life that I, and I'm doing a, a coaching for, uh, for uh, what do you call it? The, the psychological things in, uh, in sport. Uh, I like that very much. And the last picture is just me playing because I like to play. Um, but let's, I, I tried to tell you a little bit about uh, uh, how the Danish after school is made. And then I go to Ulbølle and talk about that. Uh, there's 240 of these schools in, uh, in Denmark. Uh, and all in all, we have in these schools uh, uh, more than 30,000 uh, students. And maybe that doesn't sound that much for you, but in fact, it's more than half of the students in Denmark going to, uh, going to what we call the 10th grade. Uh, that's uh, just joining one of the 240 after schools. 
So I think, uh, and I also think a lot of people in the government in Denmark thinks that uh, that these after schools they have a great impact on the how we're doing things in Denmark. For instance, Denmark is well known for having a great trust trust in each other. And uh, I don't say that the after schools uh, do all that, but I think they have uh, an impact that uh, that we are learning to live together and that we are le learning to, uh, to trust each other. Um, this is a picture of, uh, I've nearly said my school, it's uh, so our school. Uh, we call it Idrats after school in Ulbølle. That's a difficult one for you uh, from, from outside Denmark. <laughs> but uh, um, it's uh, founded in 2005. We, uh, and, and the way we founded it is quite interesting. Uh, and says a little bit of, of how we're doing the, these things in Denmark with the after schools. Um, uh, we just had an idea, my wife and I and the other guy, we just have an idea. We were working at a, at a special need uh, public school. And when we should uh, find another school for them when they were growing, uh, we, we looked after these after schools and there were no after school uh, doing sport. And we could see that uh, that the kids we had, they wanted to, to make sport and we just talked and talked and talked. And then so we said, oh, well, let's do it. And then it is uh, in Denmark, the way that uh, if we can, uh, if we can uh, find a way to, to, to um, tell the government that uh, what we're doing is okay, then they, are, uh, they, they should support us. So in a way we make a, a, a private institution, but it's also a, a, a public institution. We call it a self-governing uh, independent institution. We are, support, uh, we are supported from the state and from the, the families, uh, uh, almost 50-50. In our little school, we have uh, 100 students all in all. Uh, we have uh, 100 students were between 14 and uh, 18 years. And they are uh, at our schools for one or two years. In fact, some of them are at our schools in five years because we got another little education where we keep them. But, uh, but they are at, at our school for, uh, yeah, approximately uh, two years. One of the things that's special with uh, our after school, but that's not for all the after schools. This is for our after school, and there's 20 more. It is that it is from uh, adolescents with uh, special educational needs. All of them have some kind of uh, things to struggle with: general learning disorders, uh, ADHD, um, autism. Uh, just things like that, but when they have, are with us and have been with us for some weeks or some months, we all forget and just uh, uh, enjoy that they are so nice. They are so, uh, they're so happy. Uh, and we're just doing things together like this uh, special needs uh, doesn't exist. I'll tell you more about how we do that uh, um, uh, later. Uh, but it's very, very clear for us that that the social constructionist principles and uh, the appreciative uh, way of doing things it's very, very important because because we we are getting uh, students to our school that have had maybe five, ten years of uh, of school experience that is uh, bad. Uh, they have been uh, nagged at, they have been blamed, they have been uh, not understood. And uh, if we should put a little bit high, uh, the only thing they have learned in school uh, until now is that, uh, that they can't learn. Uh, they've been in some kind of a school environment where, where they come to our school and say, this, uh, it, it doesn't matter what I do because I cannot learn. So we have to do this uh, work of uh, uh, acknowledge them, appreciative them, uh, give them uh, give them a hope and uh, and uh, a thought that they can learn because of course they can learn. It's just uh, 
It's just to make some kind of a happy, uh, loving school, <laughs> as we said. So, so, and it's not all our students that that comes with that experience. Uh, uh, there was also a, a lot of students that have been at, at very good schools, but but we have a lot of them uh, being very hurt. Uh, that's one special thing with our school. The other special thing is that uh, that all our our students, all our pupils, they are interested in sport and not interested in the way that they look at soccer at the television, but in a way that they, but in a way that they they love to to be active. They love to move. They love to uh, doing sport themselves. Uh, all kinds of sports. Some. Some love to play soccer, some just love to run, some love to uh, do uh, fitness, some love to drive a mountain bike, but, but we have that together, that, uh, that, that, that we love doing a sport. And I'll tell you a little bit later of how we are using that to make a, a relational uh, school. They are not, uh, they are not, they're not supposed to be good doing sport. That's a very uh, important uh, 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 thing to know that, uh, we don't care if they are, if they're good or bad or having troubles in doing sport. They just, but we care that they they have it as a, a, an interest and that they are happy when they're doing sport because then we can boot, use this common uh, happiness to to make relations. Uh, because it's also the way that uh, our um, all our teachers uh, they love doing sport. And we play a lot together with the sport. And when you play together, when you have good experience, uh, are happy, are laughing, then you make uh, uh, good relations. Then it's also uh, very important to know that uh, what is for all the, the, the Danish after schools is that uh, it's, a, it's a boarding school. Not a normal, what I think, not what you think a boarding school is, but it is a school where the students are 24 hours a day. 20, yeah, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, they live at the school for uh, one, two, maybe three, four years. Uh, so, so we are doing uh, everything together. And what is very special and what I think is very, very important is that the teachers they participate in both teaching and all the other things about uh, having a resident uh, students. They uh, eat with them, they uh, wake them up in the morning, they put them to bed in the, in the evening, they help them when life sucks, when they cry, they uh, laugh with them. Uh, they, have, they have a life together. Of course, they're not working all the time, but uh, <laughs> we are a lot of teachers, so we are there uh, at, at different times. But but the students they meet us in all these areas of uh, of life. They they don't just meet us in uh, in education, and that helps us a lot when we uh, when we are struggling. For instance, with if there's and there is uh, students that struggle with uh, with mathematics. Then if they have met the same teacher at the breakfast room, uh, if they have met the same teacher in uh, doing a uh, sport and they have just laughed together, have good experience together doing sport, then it's uh, much easier to admit that this uh, mathematic, uh, I struggle with it. Can you help me? Can we make some good relation when, uh, when we do it? So that's, I think that's maybe the core thing about doing this after schools and then that, uh, that we can use the 24 hours a day, the seven days a week uh, uh, environment to make relations that, uh, that, that also uh, gives us a possibility to, to, uh, to, to do the things that's hard. What does the government say we should do for the money we get? They say that we should make the three things I've uh, lighted uh, in, the, in the bottom of this. They, we should make enlightening for life. We should make general education and we should make democratic uh, citizenship. 
What's interesting in this is that the government hasn't told us what that means. We have the freedom to, to think ourselves. What do we think? We, what do we mean this is, uh, we can do for this? Uh, how can we do it? We have the freedom to, to make our own uh, curriculum for this. We have the freedom to make our, our own way to, uh, to do it uh, practically uh, every day. So that's uh, so. So I think, uh, and that's what I think is very uh, interesting that uh, the government, in fact, gives us money. They give us some uh, highlights of what we should do, and then they say, "You must find out yourself what's the best for your school to uh, uh, how to do it." And when you should evaluate if you're doing it good, you can make your own evaluation. We don't. Uh, we don't even tell you how to do the evaluation. You have your freedom to do that. That's a very big uh, freedom, but it's also a very big responsibility. And how do we do it then? In, uh, how, how do we translate this in our school? Uh, uh, yeah, we translate it, in fact, in two ways. And this is interesting. We, we trans. Uh, translated and say we have of course to do education there should be some kind of a curriculum uh, our students should be as good as they can be uh, for Danish arithmetic uh, or what you think but but we use another way to do it I'll come back to that and then that's 50 percent of what we're doing I think and and the other 50 percent is is a Danish word that we called Danielson and we, we sit in this context where we are very, uh, very interested in what words are doing. I find it interesting that there's no English word for Daniels. Maybe you can help me later to find uh, uh, some English word for it, but I cannot find it. Um, uh, the value of the word Daniels doesn't translate into English. I, I, I've done a, I, I forgot to, to tell you that, but I've done a two years uh, education now at the Teos Institute uh, with uh, the diploma program. And, uh, and my supervisor there, Go, is, uh, is, I know she's using, uh, when she should translate it, she calls it to become somebody. Um, maybe, I don't know in fact, but I've heard that also the, the, the German word, Bildung, is uh, some kind of a translation of uh, of dance. but that's fifty percent of our our work. What we're doing with the student, and if I should translate it, what we are doing, so, so uh, then I think that we are working to make the students relational competence. We are using this uh, this environment of twenty four hours a day, seven days a week to work with the students to be relational competent. And, and for the students we have at our school, I think that's much, much more important to get a good life than to be very good at arithmetic, very good at mathematics, very good at Danish. We should make them as good as they can, but, but, but to be relational competent, that's, uh, that's much, much more important. Maybe we can find an English word for this so when we have a dialogue later. The school practice helps us to, to work with the relational competence. Um, what is interesting, for instance, is that uh, our students, they live in, the, they have uh, their own rooms, but it's not their own. They live three or four in, a, in the same room. They share, uh, they share room uh, with uh, three or four other roommates. You have to learn with the roommates. You cannot pick them. We pick the roommates and then you have to, to learn to be with them for a year and a two, uh, or two years. You can, you can imagine how this is very life-giving. This is fantastic because you have friends with you all the time, but it, it's also hard. It's also difficult. Um, some doesn't clean up, some does. Some wants uh, to, to, to live in the rooms and that they should be quiet. Some likes to shout and, and all the things of that you have to, to, uh, 
to get some kind of a, a common uh, sense of uh, how you're doing it. And, and in fact, I call it this a training camp for three or for two years, maybe when you, when you learn to focus on common good. When you learn to focus on doing a relationship, when you learn to focus on being a part of a good uh, community, to help that each each little group have their own family teaching. And when I'm most proud of what we're doing, it's when we are finishing a year, and I can see that this family teacher have almost uh, been uh, their best friend has almost been uh, their new father, their new mother. Uh, and I can see that the, there's so very, very strong relationship between the students and their family teachers. They are, they are the anchor of, uh, of what we're doing. Okay, that was, that was about uh, the, the rela relations. Um, is it okay that I just continue and then we can talk afterwards? Yeah. Because I, I will tell you, I'll tell you, um, I will tell you uh, about how we use our common interest in doing sport to 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 work with the relationship. Um, I've called it a uh, hockey with roles. Maybe that's the best example I have. Uh, uh, it could be a common situation that uh, we have, sometimes we have three or four hours in a row where we're doing a uh, sport. And uh, of course, that's not just to make them good to sport, that's to make them good to life. And now I'll tell you an example. Uh, there could be uh, three teachers having a, 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 a team of uh, 15 uh, students. And they tell the students that they today we have to play hockey. But before they start the hockey game, they have uh, taken some of the students aside. The other students don't know. And they have told them, uh, Peter, today you should, uh, today you should be uh, very, very angry. Today you should be uh, uh, pissing off all the time uh, when we play hockey. And maybe they take another one and say, today you should be uh, very lazy. Be one who doesn't, you don't want to do anything. And then there's another one should be very happy and very supporting and very, uh, 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 yeah, very, being a very, very good teammate. And the other 12 back, they don't know. And uh, they start the game. They play for maybe 15 minutes. And after 15 minutes, everybody can feel that something is wrong. Uh, this is this is not how it used to be. We are not happy. I'm I'm also getting angry now. Now he has nagged at me for two times. So, oh, it's strange. This guy, he's running like hell and he's supporting us all all the time. What happened? And then the teachers uh, stop the hug again and uh, sit down with uh, with the students and uh, talk with them. What did you experience? And and then uh, maybe one is saying. Oh, Peter, he's so angry today. He's so pissed off. It's annoying me. Now I'm also pissed off. And uh, another one say, it was so nice that he was doing that. And uh, you can imagine how the talk is going and, and uh, the teacher is uh, supporting uh, the talk. And then when they have talked about that for five or 10 minutes, maybe the te then the teacher says, hey, this is just a game. It's me that have uh, have made the rules. It's me that uh, have, have have done this, and then they can talk about. Do you have you have you seen this in other things? Have you experienced this before? Yes. Yeah, last evening uh, we had this experience with that, and uh, and what did you do? What did it make you feel? And we make some kind of evaluation of what we have uh, experienced, and. The last step in this is that that uh, that uh, the teacher and and the, and the students talk about can we use this for other areas in our life? Can you imagine that you'll have some kind of a situation in next week when you go home to your parents uh, that 
can you learn something of this that can do something for you uh, next weekend? Or can you learn this uh, something from that that can help you when you sit in the class um, uh, and, and, and the mathematics is uh, going wrong? Uh, yeah, you get the picture. So, so what's very important here is that there's, there's another curriculum in that's not doing hockey. It's a personal curriculum. It's a relational curriculum. It's the way to, to work with the word then so that I couldn't translate uh, to be relational uh, uh, competencies. So, and, and what's very, very, very good for us is that, that, that um, we are together in, in, uh, in, no, in loving to doing sport. So the motivation of doing all these processes is there in front. We don't have to, uh, to, to uh, make a lot of work in, in making it uh, nice to play hockey because we all think it's very nice to play hockey. And then we can play with, with this uh, relational thing. Just another, another short example. Uh, when we uh, go driving a mountain bike, there could be, uh, there could be uh, students who are very, very afraid when they go downhill. And, and we have to, to uh, work with that. And uh, a lot of times the students find out I can do it. I can, uh, I can come, I can uh, work with my fear and, uh, and I can do it. And then we can afterwards ask them, how did you do that? I could see you were very, very afraid when we should go downhill here, uh, but, you, but you managed, you had a success. Uh, how, in, how on earth did you do that? And then they put words on and tell us, oh, I was thinking this, or I was feeling this, and then suddenly I did it. And it was, I was so happy I did it. And then we can talk, is there other ways in your life where you are afraid? And uh, I've heard some, this is a real story. I've heard some, yes, every time I go to, uh, to the buffet where, where, we, uh, where, where we take food, I'm so afraid that I should uh, lose my uh, glass and uh, they all laugh. So I go up there and think, I'm afraid every time I go up there. Can you, the, the way you succeeded in driving downhill, the things you were doing there, can you put that into uh, to your way up to the buffet? Um, can you make it work when you go to mathematics where you also are afraid? And, and then we can use uh, the sports in doing, uh, doing uh, things like that. So that's, so, so we're, using, we're using our common interest in doing sport to work with making Ulbølle a relational school. So that's, so in fact of what I've, talked about here there's two things that helps us being a relational school it's uh, the 24 hour seven days a week thing where we where we live together where we, where we are sat together we are happy together we play together all the things and then it's for us it's very special that we're doing this sports together because then we can use it uh, working with uh, all the relational things Maybe I should find, uh, yeah, I do that, i just go back. Maybe I, we should find a, some, some uh, space now to talk before I present my idea. So do you have any comments, questions, something? Can you hear me? Yes, Paul? we can hear you. Can yeah. you? I, there are a lot of questions, really fascinating work. And I've, I've known about this before, but to see it up closer is so impressive. Uh, but a couple of things, uh, and they're related. You said very early on that learning takes place, even though they have a lot of learning disabilities. Where do you see that happening? And secondly, how, how do you do a, a valuation? Does anyone care? What, how, do you, how do you know the program works? And mm -hmm. does the state, which is supporting this, do they have any way in which they say 
they can say, hey, this is working, Thomas. We really like this. Yeah. So it's uh, a learning evaluation and, and the school becoming. Yeah, I understand. Awesome. Yeah. I, I, I understand both both questions. Um, and what what is so fantastic is that we can we can nearly see it every day that it works because we can see that the students they change from uh, having their what do you call that in English over their head. Uh, uh, they, they, they are hiding, they are walking around like this. Uh, and, and after a month, they are walking around like this. Uh, we, we can, that's, that's one way. In fact, we can see it because, because we are there 24 yeah. hours a day. Uh, uh, yeah. but, 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 but what's strange is also, and I, I didn't think that from the start, but I, uh, that they also start to uh, like doing normal class things, like sitting in a class with uh, 12 others, doing days, doing mathematics. They, because what, what, what we can see is that when they feel good, when they have these good experiences, they in fact want to do what all other young kids do in Denmark, going to school, uh, try to be better to Danish, try to be better to mathematics. So, so, so we can also see it at their results. In a, but, but I also say, I think that's, that's not because we are very, very good in educating in Danish and mathematics. We are not better than anyone else in Denmark for that, but we are good to making a, a, an environment where it's okay to, to feel that it's difficult. And it's okay to to see to 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 ask for help, and uh, so so in fact we can see it that, that they get better. They sometimes they some of them it's not all of them of course, but some of them uh, develop two or three years in a year in the, in in the normal curriculum things also. And, and do you have any? I mean, the government since they're supporting this, how do they how do they evaluated yeah they, they we we make a, we make a, in fact they don't do it that much we we they can come and they can come and visit us uh, and oh, see what funny. what we are doing but but we, we have done this school for 16 years we have never have have them on a on a on a evaluation trip they they have been at our place but not not to evaluate what what we were doing um uh, we we make uh, when they come after two months we make uh, some kind of a statement of what we see and what we think uh, uh, the students are good at and what we could develop and after a year we make another statement that uh, who that describes their uh, their what do you call it um, uh, what they have done they're doing yeah and, yeah. yeah and 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 how good they are, have been. <laughs> Uh, was, um, and then we should make some kind of evaluation uh, every f every second year for the state that uh, that this works. But but it's very very free to. Uh, last time I made an evaluation, I made a video uh, with uh, ten students, talking with them of uh, uh, some kind of relation talk of of uh, what they have experienced, what they think they have learned, and and that was my evaluation for the year. And that was what I sent to the government. Oh. Okay, uh, th Thomas, even I have a question. Can I ask? Yes, of course. Uh, uh, see, uh, in your presentation, I'm seeing that you have given a lot of importance uh, to use sports and exercise, which definitely I totally agree, you know, which can really, uh, you know, nurture a lot of life skills among children. But uh, for those uh, children who, uh, because, you know, everybody doesn't like to play sports and uh, do uh, exercises and all. Some children, uh, they also uh, like to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, do some other kind of things. So for them, uh, how do you assess them? <laughs> that's a very, very good question. Uh, and that's maybe what's not to like of this, but I don't because they don't come to my school. And to no. our school because because we are we are very 
we, 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 there is, there, there is 240 schools in Denmark of this kind. A lot of them doesn't use sport at all. And if you don't like sport, you go to, to these schools. Okay, they, thank you. They don't, they only come to our school if they love to do sports. So, so Wonderful. that problem, that problem I have minimized. <laughs> great, great. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? I'd like to comment. Um, yes, please. I think it's uh, it's wonderful what you're doing at this school, and I think it's very powerful uh, what you what you're saying. It, in some ways, it's quite. It, in some ways, it's simple, but it's yeah. it's doing it, of course, which is what it's all about. And uh, I just wanted to say also, it's just a comment and appreciating that and to, to Ken, I, because it, 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 the parents pay for the children to go to the school, right? So if you're not doing a good job, uh, then there wouldn't be any children at your school and definitely not three years in a row. Yeah, yeah. No, in fact, that's, that's right. There is closing after schools every year in Denmark and opening new after schools. And it is some kind of a, what do you call it, capitalistic uh, <laughs> way of doing it. <laughs> if you're good enough, you have uh, students. <laughs> what about training your, your teachers? I mean, they seem to have a natural gift to do these kinds of things, but what, they must have some background. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, 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 I said the background is uh, most of them are, of course, educated teachers. Then when they come to our place, we are very, very, uh, we, we look very much after that they can be appreciative. Uh, they can work, we work, we educated, educate them in the social constructionist principles. Uh, we, 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 uh, we talk a lot about that when you go into our school, you have to think, uh, you have to get inspiration of the social constructionism. Uh, you you have to to be ready to to build new worlds for the students. Um, you have to be ready to be appreciative in in every single moment. Uh, uh, so, and then we educate them also in special uh, education for special need uh, uh, kids. Um, but but in fact, the most important is uh, uh, the people we get indoor. If, if they want to, to, to work with, with that kind of values, then, uh, then we have a, a, a culture now, because we have built it for 15 years, that, that it's quite easy because we say, <laughs> we say it's, it's, it's in the walls of the school, <laughs> if you understand. Uh, but of course, it's, it has been a culture work. Uh, I was in a workshop, uh, I was in a workshop, uh, the last workshop of uh, school management. And, uh, and and I thought I thought a little bit about uh, maybe it's not school management. I think my work is culture making. Yeah. If we start if we start talking about uh, uh, one one student in a way that's not appreciative, I have to cough a little bit. <clears throat> I think we should could we try to find another way to talk about the student that is more. Uh, life giving that's so some kind um, of a culture thing although i raised a lot of these questions because i've worked so closely with ingeborg and seeing yeah. her struggle with these issues in norway um another sort of more promising one do you see any implications for how what you do could be carried into the national public school system yeah, that, that, that is my idea. I come back to <laughs> I tell you about it. I can see there's one who's got a raise in hand also. Can I? I cannot see your name, sorry. Uh, um, uh, can you see it? Yes. Sylvia, I think he means you. This is Sylvia. Sylvia, sorry, I cannot see your name. <laughs> sorry, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. Thank you were talking to me. No, I, I'm, I'm going to go back to more to, to another comment that's not going to national, but I was thinking more on the process, on the learning process. 
kind of playing with the idea of lifelong learning. This is not lifelong learning. This is day long learning. <laughs> conceptualized as something that happens all day, all the time, in all places. And what I really like what you're doing is that you're not chopping it up either in subjects or in periods or in minutes or in numbers. So for me, what I really like, it's fascinating what you're doing, is the whole open, fluid concept of learning as a, as a living activity. That's the way I see it. And I find it fascinating, which for me goes beyond culture of the school or management, just kind of learning as a living experience. Mm -hmm. And I think that would be another way of taking learning out of the hands of the schools into back into humanity. And I think you, you are kind of beginning a process like that, which is really fascinating to me. It is, I, it's, it's, it's very beautiful, Seth, because it is, I, I've just, this morning I went to, uh, in Denmark it's an hour seven in the evening, so when I talk about this morning, it's uh, the way I go. Um, uh, this morning I, I went very early to the school and it, and ate breakfast with uh, with some teachers and uh, all the students, and uh, it was a, it was Friday, so it was a nice breakfast. And then I, I looked around, and then suddenly there came one girl who we know have it very difficult, and she was sitting on the knees of a, a female teacher. She was coming to 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 sit there, and of course she moved her a little bit, but but there was some kind of a love love in the room. And uh, and I know that this teacher, uh, she should later this day she should uh, talk with her about things that was difficult. Uh, uh, but but the connection was there, and that's that's what is so strong. And what makes that connection? Uh, yeah, it's it's the all day uh, working, all day education. But it's also uh, the, the sports because we have had fun together, and it's also. Uh, that we have just ate uh, uh, two days ago. We had something that was awful, and we was laughing about that. And we were living together. And it was it was all the, the experiences uh, together, and it's it's totally uh, impossible to to split it. Exactly, and that's that's the beauty of it. And in your case, yeah. it's sport. In maybe in other schools, it's music. In others, yeah. it's dance. In others, it's drama. But kind yes. of just conceptualizing learning as a living experience, and yeah. that, I, I love it. Should I, I can present my idea and then uh, I can, we can talk uh, further because then maybe I can uh, ask a little bit, uh, talk a little bit about what I've thought about going, on, going all over Denmark. <laughs> you have another question. Maybe yeah. you, want, you want to move on. <laughs> please, please. Uh, hi Thomas. Hi. Uh, when when you were talking uh, about this uh, girl sitting close to the teacher, and yes. I was yes. thinking about the importance of connecting of of contact, and how in other cultures this has become an issue of abuse. So yeah. teacher, teachers cannot sit together to children. No. They have to think how to connect or touch mm -hmm. a child because of abuse. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think this is something that really touched me when you were talking about, because I think the connection and what you say through the body contact is so important mm -hmm. in a relational perspective, mm -hmm. no? So, uh, and in other countries, we are questioning it. Mm. So <laughs> I think it's something to really think about it. Mm. And I, uh, you really touch me when you said that because it's, it's so, so important in the yeah. way you relate with others. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. And I, even when I told you, I, 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 that's that's very funny because I thought, oh, can I can I say that? <laughs> because 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 of course we also have that balance in Denmark and the same uh, and the same problem. Uh, 
and and we talk about it in the, in the, uh, with all the teachers because how do we find this balance? Because we touch uh, very much because we live together, uh, and uh, and 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 when we do a sport together, we touch all the time. Uh, and, and of course, we have to to not get over what what is uh, what is legal and what is good and what is ethic, uh, but. But what is it, ethic? Because because some kind of a some kind of a, a, a yeah, I, I give a lot of good girls. I, when they come, they come in and say, "Hey, Thomas, they give me a hug," and I say, "Hey, should I say, hey, leave?" <laughs> but but I have to talk to uh, but I have to think about it, of course, because if I've got the the morning uh, duty and I wake uh, the girls up in the morning, I, I can't just get into the rooms. I just have to knock and wait and all the things of like that. But but I think we have to, to sh yeah, I also started to tell you that a lot of our students were hurt when they come to our school. Uh, to, 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 to dare to, to give them a hug, that's also a very, very good way to, to, to give them uh, life again. Mm -hmm. It's a balance, yeah. also in Denmark. Yes, and uh, the responsibility that we have as adults, how we approach and how we engage in physical contact, yeah. no? Yeah. So, but thank you. Thank you very much for bringing that, even though it might be politically incorrect, but yeah, I love too. it. Thank you. <laughs> I, I'm touching on, this, on to something that's, for me, really, really important in terms of all the policies that have been developed to protect children that I don't know how much they are protected or what, are the, what is the stake? What are we missing? What are we losing? Mm -hmm. So that would be another very interesting conversation in terms of the type of relationships that are possible and that are healthy in terms of teaching kids how to relate with each other, also including physical contact. And that would be another complete, complete subject that has nothing to do with your school. But I think your school is much more relevant because you live together. Mm. And I think what we have experienced during this pandemic where we are separated and we don't have the vibration of another human being close to us, what have been the damages that has created to our health and our systems? So I think that would be another interesting topic to bring up yeah i totally agree thank you Nika, for emphasizing yeah. it. Well, well let me ask you thomas what what do you find is your major challenges where where are the difficult spots for you uh for the moment and that's that i can talk a little bit also when i come back to my idea but i can answer now for the moment it is that uh, in denmark we have had 10 years of uh, trying to include um, the special need uh, kids in, uh, in, uh, in, in the normal public school. Yeah, yeah. And, and I like that idea uh, as, 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 as overall, I like that idea. But, but a lot of them has been very, very hurt of uh, when they are doing it because the public school was not good enough and they didn't have resources enough. Um, and, but because they have been in that public school, they are at both, they are, they are two things. They, are, they need a lot of help, but they are embarrassed that they need a lot of help because they have been included in the normal system, and they are embarrassed to be called to to be at a school that is a special needs school. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, some of them tells me, Thomas, I'm I'm so happy to be at this school. I know that I need the help you can give me, but you should know that when I come come home to my friends back where I live. Uh, I don't tell them that it's a special needs school. I don't just tell them that it's an after school with sport because I'm embarrassed. Oh. And, and that's, that's, uh, that's made, I think that's our biggest challenge right now to, to, uh, to find uh, the balance uh, in, in that situation that, uh, that 
that that they need help and and i also got students that that comes to our schools because they know that they they're not embarrassed and they think oh this is where i can be safe so i go there so so we have both uh, things going on at the at the same time and that's uh, that that is um, that is a challenge you know that will remain there as long as there is a, a thick curriculum and people are assessed according to some standard where these mm. kids will be look strange and if yeah. somehow schools were more like what you were doing and more like what sylvia was talking about you yeah. wouldn't have that kind of assessment that's why that's why it is because some kind we have made it wrong that you have some kind of a, a little thing you have to work extra with or get some help with and then uh, they are they are embarrassed they they tell me oh i'd like to be no oh, and my my biggest desire is to be normal i say oh i i, I think you are normal uh, you just need some help to this but you're normal come on uh, uh, but but they don't feel like that Let's hear your idea. Hmm. That's only yeah, five minutes. I, I do it. I do it very uh, quick. Uh, I was working with the, the, the diploma program, program in Terrace Institute, and 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 at the same time, I need. I met. Uh, I met a, a, a sports psychologist who who has made some uh, uh, development in how to make a world class talent talent development environment. And then I thought, what would happen to our school if we change words and we call our school uh, as a, a talent development environment instead of a special needs school? What would happen with the kids? Uh, what would happen with the teachers, with the school <laughs> culture, uh, uh, things like that? And, and, and it is quite interesting. Now I can see I'm, I'm in a hurry, but, but it is quite interesting that if, when, you, when you look at what what uh, the sports psychologists say uh, make gold medal uh, for, for Denmark in the Olympics, it's the same way I want to make school. She, he said that we need supportive training groups. I think we need supportive uh, class environments. Uh, we need close role models. Yes, our students need close ro role models. We need to share knowledge. Yes, we need to share knowledge. We need to have uh, 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 an environment where we also look at the personal skills. Yes, uh, and you can you can make all uh, uh, the things like that. And then I, I sort of what, how will how will it change uh, the the positioning of the students? It could change them from being having uh, inherent flaws and def defects to to having put potentials. How will it change the school culture? It will change from individual focus to uh, relational focus. How will it change the communication? We will stop stigmatizing uh, students. Uh, we have to, we will open the possibilities. How will it change the teachers? It will change them from being experts to be, to having expertise. And so this is my idea. I'm not finished working on it. But when you ask me, Ken, this I would like very much to yeah. spread around Denmark. Beautiful. Because I think this can this can this could change the way we think of a special uh, education in Denmark. Yeah. Or education in general. That, I mean that really yeah. yeah. That's great. So, Language is also, so important. Yeah. But it's also a little bit difficult to to make. Uh, it's also a little bit difficult to make to reality and at a at yep. a school like ours. But but it's a, but it's a very interesting idea. I work with it uh, more. So Thomas, I'm playing with words, and I'm thinking about either learning as a living experience or living as a learning experience. Yeah, and, and play with this in the way you are articulating your your space. And your offering. Thank you. Before we leave, thank you very much, Thomas. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you for participating. Great presentation. Mm -hmm. And I it's even great. thought, how how should I make an hour? But I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did. I, together with you, beautiful. because 
Yeah, and together with you because of your nice questions. Thank you. No, it's great work you're doing there, Thomas. It's really wonderful. It's yeah. beautiful and it's very. Are you in Copenhagen or where are you in Denmark? Uh, uh, the school is in Fyn between Svendborg and Popper. Right now I'm in Copenhagen, in fact, with my son. But <laughs> well, maybe we will be in Copenhagen later next year. Maybe we can come visit you. It would be wonderful to go that, to allow this. You should, you should be so very welcome. I would love it. Okay, so we'll, we will contact you. But, but bring your basketball okay. shoes. Okay. Will, yeah. <laughs> be in good shape and we'll make some fun with you. <laughs> together with you there will be so much to learn don't worry <laughs> but I we would will love, feel, we I will would feel very you safe you. and very take care by you, okay. see, see Thomas, you. remember to stop the video sorry yeah i'll send, I I'll send an email and continue the conversation so we can get something going that would be wonderful yeah. to visit you unbelievably well you all are making this happen.